On the 6th and 9th of August in 1945, the United States dropped atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. The attacks helped bring an end to World War II and changed the face of geopolitics and modern warfare forever. Soon after the first bomb dropped, the local newspaper in Oak Ridge, Tennessee ran the banner headline, Oak Ridge Attacks Japan. The newspaper was right on the money. Unbeknownst to many living there, the small city in East Tennessee, which by design couldn't be found on any map, had played a pivotal role in the development of the world's first nuclear weapons. Without the knowledge of the rest of the country, and most of the people living in Oak Ridge, the secret city was at the epicenter of the Manhattan Project, the American-led effort to build an atomic bomb. But it wasn't the only secret city in America working to bring the idea of the nuclear bomb to reality. This is the story behind Oak Ridge, America's largest secret city. And this is Learn Something New. On December 21st, 1938, German scientists Otto Hahn and Fritz Straussmann became the first people to successfully split or fission a uranium atom. This groundbreaking experiment sent shockwaves throughout the scientific community. Word rapidly reached the United States and European allies that Nazi Germany was on a possible path to developing atomic weapons. On August 2nd, 1939, at the urging of scientist Leo Szilard, physicist Albert Einstein sent a letter to the US President Franklin Roosevelt warning him that Nazi Germany may already be developing this strange and powerful new weapon. As a result, Roosevelt established the Advisory Committee on Uranium in 1939. And and in the spring of 1941, several British scientists implored Roosevelt to initiate development of an atomic weapons program in the United States, hoping to beat Nazi Germany in the race to develop this new technology. By September of 1942, United States Army General Leslie R. Groves was assigned to manage the Manhattan Project. He acquired funding, mobilized a diverse workforce including attracting top scientists, and selected the ideal locations for the project to ensure secrecy and success in this new dramatic undertaking. Ultimately, Groves approved three locations for this new clandestine project, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, Hanford, Washington, and Los Alamos, New Mexico. These locations were not chosen at random, with each having to meet special requirements for the Manhattan Project to ultimately succeed. On September 19th, 1942, just two days after being assigned to the lead role in developing the Manhattan Project, General Groves approved an idyllic location in East Tennessee, a series of valleys and rolling hills approximately 20 miles west of Knoxville. It was a sparsely populated area that would be the perfect place to develop a secretive town. When it was being selected, it was originally called the Kingston Demolition Range, shortly after being replaced with the name Clinton Engineering Works. The area worked well for several reasons. It was supposed to have four production plants, gaseous diffusion, pile centrifuge, and electromagnetic, and while they were going to try and mitigate any issues that may arise, they also knew that they were going to be developing the world's most destructive bomb, and that anything could happen. The hills and the valleys of the area allowed for a natural separation between the area and the nearby population centers. The sparse population already in the area meant that an accident would result in fewer deaths than if they had gone with an area outside of Chicago like they had originally considered. The location was also far enough inland to the United States that it would dissuade enemy attacks, and the nearby hydroelectric dams could supply as much energy as they needed. But in order to set up an entire city from scratch, they would first have to get rid of the people there already. Because at the time, there were already around 1,000 families occupying the planned zone. It was during the fall of 1942 that the government began acquiring large amounts of land, starting with the purchase of over 55,000 acres, totaling around $3.5 million. These families were not approached with offers and asked if they wanted to accept. Rather, they were given the money and told to leave, with their homes being demolished shortly after. By the spring of 1943, it was officially designated Clinton Engineering Works, and construction began almost immediately. Throughout the rest of 1943, thousands of workers would come into the city, many of whom came from nearby Knoxville, along with the vast amounts of materials. They set up tents and other makeshift shelters as they rapidly built hundreds of buildings from houses to industrial structures, all of which were obscured by the hills and the many security fences that surrounded the area. Although the location was originally designed for around 13,000 people, by the end of the war, it had grown to over 75,000. 
And yet, if you were to look at any map of the time, it simply did not exist. But the people around it would be aware that there was something there, and so it needed a name. The government began to call it Oak Ridge because it sounded sufficiently bucolic in general to be used as a cover name for a residential area. Despite its role as a secretive government-run city, it was still a city. People raised families there while they were contributing to a scientific and militaristic achievement like never before. This meant that there were more than just homes and laboratories scattered throughout. Beyond the typical suburban neighborhoods, there were restaurants and movie theaters, schools and daycares, hospitals and tennis courts. But this isn't to say that life in a secret city was like any other. The residents were constantly inundated with secrecy and oversight. Children 12 and older were required to have an ID badge and there were billboards around saying, let's keep our trap shut, to remind those that it was imperative to the mission to keep any knowledge from escaping the fences that surrounded their community. In other ways, however, the community sadly reflected many others throughout the United States, segregating itself into white and black, with the African-American families that worked within given the most basic dwellings, made of plywood and heated with crude stoves, as well as lacking any internal plumbing not to mention being the furthest away from any of the work sites. Work in the community progressed at a remarkable pace, however, even with some of the setbacks along the way. Working in tandem with another secret city in Hanford, Washington, that was used to produce plutonium and ultimately testing the nuclear bomb outside of yet another secret city, Los Alamos, New Mexico. Eventually, the nuclear bomb would be used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, putting an end to the war and stunning the world, as it ended the lives of approximately 110,000 Japanese citizens near instantaneously. Just days after the attack, the Smith Report was released to the public, detailing information about the secretive Manhattan Project. This stifled media speculation, but also inflamed interest into the cities that weren't found on any map. Even in Oak Ridge itself, where of the tens of thousands who lived there, less than 100 knew what they were actually working on. And so, some might have been shocked when they read the local newspaper headline that said, Oak Ridge Attacks Japan. The story of the Manhattan Project is often remembered as a scientific and technological marvel, but often discounted in its recounting is the sheer scale of operation and secrecy required to pull it off. Of the Manhattan Project's $2.2 billion cost, around 60% of the cost was dedicated to the housing and work facilities of the 130,000 people who made the achievement possible. It was an interesting choice to expend so much extra time and money on this critical war effort to make the life in the city as normal as possible, indulging in the culture and leisure of the time while dedicating themselves to such a momentous effort. Oak Ridge even had a symphony orchestra led by a Manhattan Project scientist. But it's also important to recognize that those who lived and worked there were willing to sign on for a project, the true goal and purpose of which were unknown to them, unable to tell their families what they were doing, and having to commit themselves to the hope of a brighter future. Thank you for watching Learn Something New. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.